Welcome back! I'm so happy you're joining me again for another video and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you and thanks for joining our community. I'm Lucy, your narrator. Before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. And also please watch this video to the end to see the preview trailer and some behind the scenes photos. Join me at the old time drive-in movie theater where it feels like we're all watching this movie together. Someone please pass the popcorn. Now our feature presentation. The best years of our lives is a drama, romance and war movie. It was directed by William Wyler and it won seven Oscars. It was released in the USA in 1946 and it stars Frederick March, Myrna Lloyd and Dana Andrews. And some of their co-stars were Teresa Wright, Virginia Mayo, Harold Russell, Hoagie Carmichael, Ray Collins and others. This movie is about three World War II veterans two of them traumatized or disabled, returned home to the American Midwest to ch discover that they and their families have been irreparably changed. And now for some behind the scenes trivia and tidbits. William Wyler, who served as a major in the Army Air Force during World War II, incorporated his own wartime experiences into the film just as Fred Derry Weiler flew in B-17s in combat over Germany, although not as a bombardier. Weiler shot footage for documentary films. His hearing was permanently damaged when an anti-aircraft shell exploded near his plane while on a bombing raid. Additionally, he modeled the reunion of Al and Millie in which they first see each other at opposite ends of a long hallway on his own homecoming to his wife, Margaret Talichet. And William Wyler patterned the fictional Boone City after Cincinnati, Ohio. As seen by such things as the taco stand, the filming was obviously in California. In fact, Al's apartment building was actually located on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. And the airplane graveyard where Dana Andrews' character climbs aboard a decommissioned bomber was a real graveyard for thousands of B-17 and B-25 bombers, along with numerous fighter planes. The crew washed down Andrews' bomber, then hid it with dust to make it stick on the forward turret for a grittier look. Though the salvage crew scene was part of the movie, in real life such work crews did dismantle the old planes to make housing for returning veterans. And Harold Russell was first discovered by William Wyler when he saw him in an army training film called Diary of a Sergeant in 1945, a film about the rehabilitation of wounded servicemen. And to avoid awkwardness when he first met his fellow cast members, Harold Russell made a point of reaching out with his hooks and taking their hands, thus putting them at ease with his disability. And director William Wyler was furious when he learned that Samuel Goldwyn had sent Harold Russell for acting lessons. He preferred Russell's untrained, natural acting. And when Homer is lighting everyone's cigarettes after the second one, he asked if either of the two men are superstitious. They say no, and he says that he is. He blows out the match and lights up a second. This is actually in reference to a habit amongst ground troops of the First World War. It is called the three on a match superstition. The enemy would see the light as the first cigarette is lit. They would take aim when the second is lit and would pull the trigger when the third is lit. 
and in a scene at Butch's bar, Homer asked Butch if he would play a song for him. How about Lazy River, Homer asked. Remember that? Hoagie Carmichael, who plays Butch, composed Lazy River. And for his performance as Homer Parrish, Harold Russell became the only actor to win two Academy Awards for the same role. The Academy Board of Governors thought he was a long shot to win, so they gave him an honorary award for bringing hope and courage to his fellow veterans through his appearance. Later that ceremony, he won for Best Supporting Actor. As in the film, Harold Russell was engaged to marry his high school sweetheart during filming. Virginia Mayo and Steve Cochran stood up for him at his wedding. And Virginia Mayo had read the novel Glory For Me and envisioned herself as Marie Derry. And when producer Samuel Goldwyn refused to give her the part, she had pictures taken of herself at a local bar. That convinced Goldwyn, who was simultaneously working on The Secret Life of Walter Mitty in 1947, to give her the part over the objections of director William Wyler. Mayo filmed both of the above movies simultaneously, sometimes shooting scenes from both on the same day. And Myrna Loy receives top billing as she was the most successful female star at the time. And this was Frederick March's favorite movie out of all his films. was written by Robert E. Sherwood, Pulitzer Prize winning playwright of Petrified Forest and Idiot's Delight. From this, William Wyler, who won the Academy Award for his direction of Mrs. Miniver, wove a pattern of motion picture magic with Myrna Loy and Frederick March living through the heartwarming second bloom of love. Dana Andrews and Teresa Wright feeling the breathtaking thrill of love at like that one we've got a lot more hotter than your morning coffee thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did i would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like comment below share with others subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time i upload a new video please come back to see the next one until then bye for now and be blessed